I think I'm right in saying that INTJs are one of the most well-represented types on this channel in terms of videos, but are they well-represented in our subscribers? I know that there are rumours that clicking the subscribe button on our channel automatically sends your details to the Illuminati, but that is not true. Seriously, it's not true. I once read that the thing that separates human beings as a species from other animals is the capacity to simulate possibilities that don't currently exist. With the exception of consciousness itself, imagination is the defining characteristic of humanity. And despite it being the source of so much of what we enjoy and value in life, it's still kind of weird. Back in the days of our evolutionary past, you can picture the hunter-gatherers, the caregivers, the tool wielders, the proponents of useful habits and routines that could become traditions. But what are the imaginative types doing in this scenario? This is why I think that, at least in theory, it makes sense that types like INTJs would be rare. Their rarity would make sense from an evolutionary perspective. I mean, you couldn't have a tribe full of INTJs. There could have been maybe one or two per large group or tribe. So, what do INTJs offer? What is their purpose? Why have these traits continued to exist in the population? What is the genius of the INTJ? The abstractionists. INTJs take what they see in the world and then translate it into abstract form. They can then play with this idea in their minds and take it and transfer it into a new area or find a different creative use for it. When you look at the game of chess, the queen is the piece that is considered to be the most powerful. It is your greatest weapon. But you will sometimes see the queen being sacrificed in order, often, to win the game or gain a decisive advantage. Now, you could just take that at face value, or you could see it as representative of a concept. That concept would be you sometimes need to give up or sacrifice something valuable in order to achieve what you want. A simple example of seeing something in practice and trying to describe it in abstract terms. You can even take that notion of giving up something of value to achieve a greater aim and abstract it even further. You should define something's worth not by its price or socially constructed value, but according to how useful it is to reach your aim. You have bishops and you have knights, and knights are considered to be weaker pieces than bishops. However, in the game of chess, there are different types of positions you can see on the board. So-called open positions and also closed or fixed positions. In a closed position, suddenly the knights become infinitely more powerful. The bishops become restricted and the knight's unusual movement becomes a huge strategic advantage. Again, what concepts could you take from that? You might say that something of someone's power is not an objective thing, but can only be measured relative to the position it finds itself in. You might choose to abstract some kind of life lesson from it, or life strategy. You could say, let me assess what pieces I have, what skills, what attributes, what assets, and then try and change the board. The board in this case might represent the place you work, or the place you live, or your environment in general. And how can I change the board to better suit the pieces I have? How can I maneuver things around me or myself into a position where my attributes are strengths? So I think it's obvious that I think way too much about chess, but this is how an abstracting mind works, and INTJs are kind of the epitome of that. It's not about the thing, it's about what the thing represents. INTJs tend not to readily seek out lots of new experiences, especially in the sensory realm. Obviously, this has the negative consequence of limiting the amount of data they have access to. However, their ability to make an observation, convert it into abstract form, and then apply it to a different area compensates for their tendency to either not seek out or simply ignore new information. They can make small amounts of knowledge or insights go an extremely long way. Patterns and narratives. The human brain is naturally a pattern-seeking entity, but INTJs seem especially good at this. Seeing the underlying thread which connects things, or, as I've said before, finding a line of best fit to tie together seemingly unrelated events, in the same way that a detective would piece together a narrative from the clues left at a crime scene. It's about being able to look past the details and see that things of apparent uniqueness are actually different manifestations of the same concept in practice. 
You can see this a lot in storytelling. Many people have speculated, rightly or wrongly, that there are only a fairly small number of types of stories, and that despite all the different characters, details, and fantasy worlds, at their heart, they can be reduced or condensed into these principles. That is the power of introverted intuition, to narrow in on the most crystallized and concise essence of a thing. But INTJs are not simply abstract thinkers, they're actually doers as well, to manifest the abstract in reality. Yes, they plan, they analyze, they strategize, but they do take action. In fact, they feel beholden or obligated to the visions they have. To imagine something that does not exist, then bring it out of their minds from this intangible form into something physical. The present is theirs. The future, for which I really worked, is mine. Nikola Tesla. INTJs are often not in the here and now. Their introverted intuition is analyzing the past and mapping out towards the future. It does this in two ways. One is to try and predict where things are going. Then the other is thinking about what ought to happen, what would be good to happen, and then how can they make it happen. What I think that a lot of INTJ stereotypes miss, stereotypes which are perpetuated often by people on YouTube, is that they don't have to be huge grand plans or visions. These things can be day-to-day. -day. There's nothing inherent about introverted intuition that wants to revolutionize the world or push the human race forward, although I don't think INTJs would object to either of those things. It describes a way of existing that conceptualizes things, abstracts things, imagines, and then takes action. INTJs don't want to take quick action and figure it out as they go, even though if they have to, they will. Unlike other types who might want to be kept on their toes or constantly surprised, INTJs have absolutely no problem with a plan turning out exactly as anticipated. In fact, that is a great joy for them. A committee is a group that keeps minutes and loses hours. As I've mentioned before, INTJs are very individualistic. Despite their desire to want to see the world as accurately and objectively as possible, they are compelled and driven by inner visions and by their own subjective desires, which comes from their third slot introverted feeling. They're a complicated paradox of coming across cold or robotic, yet having a deeply personal, burning and intense drive to leave their own personal mark on the world.